Hey guys, Harv here, and today we're going to send the probe off into the depths of space. It's going to be called a space probe. It's going to go far out, past Kerbin orbit, past even the moon's orbit, past even Minmus orbit. Today, we're going to try and build a probe that's capable of escaping the gravity of the sun. Kerbal, uh, that's his name, by the way. Yes, it shall be so. And to do this, we're going to need as much fuel, as much thrust, and as little unnecessary weight as possible. And the Kerbal Space Center commissioning team, don't know why I said commissioning, uh, bo board of directors, that's a good one. The Kerbal Space Center board of directors have ruled out that crew do not class as necessary. So instead of having loads of fuel underneath this astronaut, as per usual, today we're going to have loads of fuel sitting on top. And to be exact, that's about three... nope, six tanks. Six... Uh, it's actually going to be 7.5 tanks, because we're going to use these on the side. Now we're going to use aerospikes today, because they are far, by far the best engines. And to put them on, you can't put them on on 3 times symmetry. What you have to do is go onto one time symmetry, take the whole stack, and then replace that back on as three times. First problem overcome. Now the second problem is stability. How are you going to stable your? How are you going to keep your craft stable? That's the right way around. How are you going to keep your craft stable when there's no crew to do so? Well, the answer is we're going to take hold of the stack, and before placing it on, hold shift and press A or D, and look, you can make minuscule inclination changes, which is extremely useful. Now we're going to just do one, because that is by far the best number. <laughs> now there's a reason. We want most of our thrust to be going straight upwards, rather than out to the side, keeping us stable. Sure enough, that's plenty enough to keep us spinning extremely fast. And that's how we need it to be. And we're going to lead the, fu the fuel down into these engines so we can actually take off. Oh, wait. We need to actually bring the whole thing further down. More like that. Because it wasn't taking from the last tank there. But nonetheless, another problem overcome. And there you go. That is literally all we are doing today. We're just building it. No, we're actually going to fly it, of course. And the way we're going to keep the crew from damaging this probe's chances is we're going to clamp them to the ground. <laughs> Leave a little hole for them to get in and out of. That's right. So what we want to do is turn the engines on and then release it. And that will never be used. So yeah, that's fine. Ladies and gentlemen, Kerbal Space Center is proud to present the probe. The deep space probe, the the probe of awesomeness, as it will be called. Let's launch it. Ah, Bill Kerman, the scientist of the three, undoubtedly, is going to be the one to launch this probe today. Why is that going so great? I don't know. Today we are going to launch the probe. Have I said that enough already? Okay. Three, two, take that off. One, engines and the couple. And we can press the square bracket to switch to the ship. Now it's just a matter of waiting. And this is a fast ship, isn't it? You can tell the stability is working, which is promising. And we are already past 200 meters a second, and we're not even at 3,000 meters apart from when we are. So let's take a look at our trajectory screen. <laughs> look at the nav ball. That would make Bob sick, surely. Even now he's down on the ground watching this probe's progress and he's feeling slightly dizzy. Ah, oh, I didn't notice that. The atmosphere is actually a layer. Huh, how interesting. And as the probe progresses, it's apogee that's wrong, isn't it? It's Apple Key. It's Apple Key rises and rises. Apple Apps is the common turn. Apple Key is for Kerbin and Apple G is for Girth. Uh, or something. 
and it rises and rises past 150,000 meters and it just keeps on going and there is the spacecraft not ready to launch because it's got no engines thought I might pick up that nevertheless it is now spinning faster than ever ooh pretty likes faster and faster it goes passing 3,000 meters per second oh and it is now leaving the Kerbin system and where it goes nobody knows the apogee is rising and rising and rising and rising surely this will be enough to break free of its gravity the Sun the massive thing right there come on oh and there it goes did you see that little flash there it is there it is Sun Sun escape when is it? Tell us. 68 years. <laughs> That's going to require a little bit of time acceleration, I think. Look, and we're even only... We're only 300,000 meters away from the planet, and already we're, at, we're going this fast. Isn't that amazing? And we only have two engines, apparently. Okay. <laughs> I'll go with that. I'll go with that. And now it's time to watch and to accelerate. Oh, if the game doesn't crash. There we are with the new 100,000 times warp feature that's been implemented. Ah, we're leaving the sun behind. But of course, 68 years is no small amount of time, is it? No. Is it 68 years? Just want to check that. If it is, if we do really have to wait 68 years, well, you can see up here, these are days. Yeah, it's going to take a while, and luckily for you, this is a YouTube video, which means I have to do the waiting and you don't. So, we shall be back. We shall be back at some point. 68 years into the future. It's going to take a while. Well, here's a new screen that the channel hasn't seen before. This is my desktop. Uh, and we're on my desktop because we're going to use the calculator today. Sorry, Bill. We're going to have to use your face. Now, <laughs> just going to put it there. Cover his face. Now, when I said 68 years, I don't think I really understood the true impact of what my words meant. Because 68 years, as you may have guessed, is a long time. Even with 100,000 times time acceleration. Now to find out what I'm in for, I'm going to use the calculator today. So there, are, we're going to do this by hours. There's 24 hours in a day, and there's 365 days in a year. So if it was one year, that's how many hours we'd be waiting on normal time acceleration. But it isn't one year, it's 68. And of course, we can divide that by how much we are accelerating time by. 100,000. And the outcome is 5 hours... 0.968, which we could find out, but basically six hours. I'm going to have to wait six hours for this, for this YouTube video. I'm going to leave my computer on for six hours in order to find out what happens when we leave the orbit of the Kerbal system. So thanks, YouTube. You've got me into this, and I can't back out now. Or I could just not upload the video. Ha! <laughs> but no, I'm not going to do that. Or you never know. If you don't watch this, then uh, I clearly didn't. Or you just didn't watch the video. Either way, I'm rambling now. So I'm going to leave you to your happy knowledge that in a few seconds' time, you will find out the result of whether... Um, I don't, what are we actually looking for? We're just, we're just sending it out there for no reason, aren't we? Ugh, pointless. It's completely pointless. Oh well, six hours later... So, we're back after three hours, which, well, it's not exactly three hours, but around three hours. So, that should mean we're halfway to our destination, right? Well, actually, it should be more than halfway, seeing as we're going to be slowing down continuously to our destination. So, you can see here, I worked out that the uh, amount of days in that 68 years or whatever um, was around 24 thousand days and we're at 11 at the moment so nearly halfway there as I've said repeatedly 
And yet, when we look on the map view, huh, still 68 years, 35 days and 3 hours, which, unless I'm mistaken, is the exact same time it said when we started out. Um, which leads me to believe that this is never going to work, and because I kind of want to play the game, and I can't do that whilst this mission is running, I'm going to say this is definite evidence we will never actually escape. I'm not going to end the mission, I'm just going to go to the space center. So it's still there, whilst I'm lying all my other missions, it will still be completing its task, but I don't think it's ever going to reach, I don't think it's ever going to finish that task, so we're going to call it there then. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like the video, then you can like the video. As I said last time, and as I will, probably will carry on saying, I like saying that. Anyway, the point is, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.